It's not easy. It's dangerous. It hasn't been done before. Let's talk about the future of space exploration. Now, if you know me, you know that I love space. Which is why I'm excited to be back on the set of Star Trek Continues to kick off the next innovation spotlight. Today's topic, space exploration. We have the technology now to go to Mars, so we can do it, and that's why we will do it. Hey boss, I'm Grant. Hey Grant, nice welcome to, to my you. ship. <laughs> Thank you. We're here with Boss Landsdorp, CEO of Mars One, a nonprofit organization based in the Netherlands that's seeking to develop a permanent human colony on Mars. So, can you tell me a little bit about the Mars One mission? Mars One is a not-for-profit organization that's establishing uh, the first human settlement on Mars in 2025. The very exciting thing about Mars One is that it's a mission of permanent settlement. So the people that we send to Mars, they're staying there. And instead of trying to bring people back, we send more people every two years. After 50 years, it might just be possible for there to be a an, uh, an, an self-sufficient colony. You're having to develop a lot of these technologies that, that don't exist. Well, what's very important to, to realize is that because it's a mission of permanent settlement, while the systems don't exist, the technologies do. We don't need bigger rockets to send the, the cargo or the humans. We don't need bigger landing systems. Uh, we don't need to invent the technology to take off from Mars. It's a lot of new system development and certainly some improvements will be done, but it's not new inventions needed to get humans to Mars. Yeah, sure. Why do you why reinvent the wheel? Don't DIY Mars. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, thank, you. thank you. All great ideas start in science fiction. Hey, John, come in, John. Can you hear me? I can read you loud and clear, Grant. Excellent. Hey, everybody, this is John Thornton. He's the CEO of Astrobotic. So, John, can you tell me a little bit about Astrobotic? Sure, Astrobotic is a lunar logistics company. So we, we think of ourselves like a, a FedEx or UPS to the moon. Uh, we take packages from around the world, we bolt them up on our lander, which is our delivery truck, and we drop them off on destinations on the moon and on the surface. What do you think about colonizing the moon? Yeah, someday we, we do imagine that the moon could be colonized. Uh, what we're looking into right now on our first mission is a destination called Lacus Mortis. Uh, it translates to Lake of Death, but the reason that we go there is that there's a very unique feature called a skylight there. Uh, and it's thought that if you can get to the bottom of one of these skylights that it could be an entrance to a cave. So if we can find a cave, uh, we can use it for shelter for people, much like people settled here on Earth in caves first. We're starting to put together the pieces of, of what might be necessary for, for future human settlements, even now. Uh, so one day, we, we do think that that will happen. Uh, and it might happen sooner than we think. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot for your time, John. Thank you, Grant. Signing off. The ultimate test is when it flies and you push the button and turn it on in space. John, come in. John, do you read me? Yeah, Grant, we read you loud and clear down here in Alabama. <laughs> awesome. So everybody, this is John Horak from Teledyne Technologies. So John, Teledyne's been involved with NASA doing projects since the 50s, since the original space race. Can you tell me a few of the projects that you've worked on? We've been involved with nearly every project since the beginning. And today we operate the payloads on board the International Space Station, uh, and we're building hardware for NASA's new launch system. So you put a person in a capsule. What ergonomic considerations do you have for your equipment? Well, for example, you may need to use a switch, and it may be the case that the astronaut has to have a glove on when, when that switch is activated. And so, I mean, you can think about it, you're more dexterous if you, can, if you can use your fingers, but you can't do that outside a spacecraft. So you have to think about things like that. Um, when you're riding up the hill in the rocket, it's an incredibly vibrating environment. You're jostling all over the place. So if you need an astronaut to reach out and punch a button, that button better be pretty big because their hand may be bouncing all over the place. All right, John, sorry, I gotta go right now because I have to meet another friend of mine. If only there was some way I could transport across the galaxy instantaneously. Oh, wait. Hey, everybody, I'm here with my friend and space engineer, Bob Akfordowski. 
you and your team yeah. landed a nuclear-powered semi-autonomous robot that is equipped with a laser, with a laser yeah. on another planet. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> That's like science fiction, but in real life, man. We are very fortunate to get to do some of the, I think some of the coolest things in the world today, or, or not in the world, I guess, uh, in the case <laughs> yeah. would be. Is there more that we can learn from going back to the moon? There are missions, you know, still at the moon right now that are doing lunar reconnaissance orbiter and things like that that are understanding um, uh, the moon. But I think the the more exciting, you know, part of the moon is really as this kind of, the, the you know, the launch pad for other things, right? It's it's right. near Earth. It's a very reasonable place to get to, um, and it doesn't have you know the heavy gravity of Earth. So if you can get things there, it's a nice stable platform. You can build huge structures, um, the same kind of structures you see on Earth, but you know now without the atmosphere to deal with. I mean, I still have a dream of like a, a Hubble-like telescope on the surface of a moon. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs>Welcome to the bridge. Here, take a seat. This is the seat I want to be in. That's the seat. Everybody, this is Glenn Smith. He's the CEO of Mauser Electronics. So let's talk about Mauser. Okay. Do you think Mauser will ever distribute parts on the surface of the moon? Oh, I don't have any doubt about it. You know, it fits our model perfectly. I mean, you're going to need small quantities and you're going to need them immediately. And that's what we do the best. So there, there's nobody else better suited for that environment than we are. Well, Glenn, do you want to see some more of the ship? Are you kidding me? Of course. That's <laughs> why right. I'm here. Hey, this is Grant. I'm on my way. It's awesome to hear about all the exciting innovations in the field of space exploration. As always, Mouse is proud to offer the newest components and help empower that innovation together. Head on over to the Innovation Hub, where you can delve deeper into the subject of space exploration. We'd also like to thank our sponsors who helped make this episode possible. Microsemi, Vichet, and Phoenix Contact.